Hi everyone, it's Twitch65. This video is a quick how-to on taking this out-of-the-box white and green Tropicana reefer box car to this in-service car. Step one, disassembly. By removing the trucks, the wheels, and separating the box from the deck, we can better address each section with a different technique. Disassembly also allows us to wash the plastic parts in warm soapy water to remove dust, dirt, and oils from handling. After a good rinse and time to dry, all the parts are given a coat of gloss varnish, which I did off camera. I used my airbrush for the gloss varnish because I can use acrylic based varnishes, which dry quickly and don't have the nasty propellants to deal with. If you don't have an airbrush, an aerosol can spray can be used. I also highly recommend you find a way to hold the parts without touching them while they dry. I just used a big blob of blue tack pressed into the internal part of the box car and use that as a gripping point for the clip. I'm not going for an old rusted out railroad car, so just a light coating of black panel liner to help bring out the details. I ran the black liner over all the green areas of the car. This adds depth to the overall dark color. If you have liner that got to a spot where you really didn't want it to be, or you have any really stubborn tide marks because you let it dry too long, you can then take the Q-tip, dip it in a little odorless thinner, and use that as kind of an eraser. I picked out a variety of oil paints. The paints that I picked up were just from a local art store, nothing special. For this project, I used mostly burnt umber, raw sienna, and yellow. Those were gonna be my staining and filter colors. I also used a little bit of green, red, and white paints, and those were there to kind of change the shade or provide some fading to the boxcar. The technique I'm using is known as dot pin washing, and it's a good way to add streaking and color filtering and make the paint look sun faded. As an applicator, I used the tip of a toothpick to add the dots all over the car. And this works very well to limit how much paint actually goes on these parts as the box car and end scale is quite small. Now on to what I guess is step number three, what I like to call the fun part. Using a flat brush and odorless thinner, I pull the brush down through all the dots of paint. I keep my strokes in a downward motion, and this way we end up mixing and blending the colors together and adding a lot of streaking. Take your time and keep moving back and forth, remembering you can add more paint if you remove too much until you get the look you're looking for. At first, it will look really bad and really dark, but fear not. Once you have all the paint streaked and kind of moved to where you want it, let it sit for 10 to 15, up to half an hour, and we go back to our Q-tips. This time we start off with a dry Q-tip and remove the excess paint. The really nice thing about oils is that they're extremely long working time. So if you don't like the effect, use thinner to remove some or all of the paint and start over. However, once you're happy with the look, leave it to dry, 24 hours at a minimum. After the 24 hour dry period, it's time to fix the paints in place. And I do this by using a very light coat of acrylic matte varnish all over all the parts. And the reason for matte is it takes the shine off of the oil and the enamels. They tend to dry with a kind of a semi-gloss look and it'll give some grip and some bite and places for the pastel powders that are coming next to attach themselves and stay in place. Much like how I weather buildings, I like to use inexpensive artist pastels. I just take a hobby knife and scrape off as much as I think I'm gonna need, pick colors that are appropriate for road dirt, soot, or heavy rusting. I still like to use that old worn out number two paintbrush to tap the powder in place and get it to a general location. And then using a fan brush or a second dry brush without any powder on it, I will lightly brush the surface to blend and smooth out the powders. Again, once this stage is done and you have it looking dusty like you want it to look, it's time to go back and hit it with another matte varnish. And our last step is just to reassemble all the parts back to their original positions. This whole car was completed over a single weekend with approximately an hour's worth of actual work time. The longest time sinks being the oil and enamel paint drying times, as well as the varnishes. If you have a bunch of cars that you need to weather, you could knock out quite a few over a weekend. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on how I take a factory fresh out of the box rail car and make it look more realistic. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content.